connecting, preview. Come on. Give it a second. It's connecting. You see the part where it says connecting. Oh. And I think we are live now. We are. We are live now. What I am going to do though is turn the volume off. Otherwise, we'll hear Brilliant. ourselves an echo of ourselves, which would be terrible. Okie dokie. Um, hello, viewers. I am here with Alan Meads, who made this. Uh, what on earth? There's someone singing. There's someone singing. singing over there. That's Play Margot for you. Um, that means right, right this, and I'm going to swivel this screen over so that we can see him say hello. Hello, Facebook. <laughs> hello, world. Let's look into the future. Or the present. Or the future present. Something like that. Maybe. There we are. You can see you. Fantastic. Um, okay, so would you like to introduce yourself in your own words? Yes. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name's Dr. Alan Meads. Um, I'm the, I guess I'm the lead researcher on this thing called Arcade. Oh no, let's go that way. Arcade Tales. <laughs> Easy which, mistake to make. Which is an attempt to um, capture the history of UK arcades, but instead of being from the perspective of the designers, it's from the perspective of people like you and me so people that actually played in arcades and did all that real kind people. of stuff real people and also it's not just about games because games are really boring it's about um, all the other stuff as well I'm being flippant it's been a, long, it's been a long weekend of course games are really good but it's also about hanging around in arcades climbing on top of them having the parties. social element yeah, the experience completely. not just the games themselves absolutely absolutely that's, that's good because it. it's not just yes um, so you are actually a doctor. I'm actually a doctor. And that that factors in. We were talking about how that actually factors into your, your research. Yeah, my everything. my my doctorate. So I got my um, my PhD in 2013 from Brunel University. And so I a semi recent graduate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only and a few years uh, ago. I studied. Um, I spent a lot of time studying people who hacked and glitched and um, modded video games and very modern thing to do. So and then got turned into a book that nobody read. But it was a brilliant book, because I'm not allowed to be self-deprecating. <laughs> That's true, I told him he's not allowed to do that. <laughs> but you said that you did you did sell copies, though. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a you did, bit you of commission did. every now and then. So. Good, good. Um, so, how did you go from that book? Uh, mm. What was it called, by the way? Can people buy it? It's called the snappily title of <clears throat> Understanding Counterplay in Video Games by Routledge. It only cost about 80 if I have to put a copy. Seriously? Yeah, it's what academic. Is, that's is, what it hard, with, is it hardcover? Is it? Yeah, it's a hardcover. Very, that's very what happens nice. with academic publishing. You, uh, oh, that's fine. Um, it's if it's worth it. If it's worth it, you know. If it was fifteen pounds or ten pounds, yeah, more people could read Why it. Why don't you have a copy with you here today? Because it's eighty-five pounds a copy. Oh, so you don't even have your own copy. I do. It's, it's just it's just kept with bubble wrap around it in case I drop it. <laughs> <laughs> but of course. These things you can throw around. Uh, <laughs> they're quite, quite. Do you print these at home, or do you? No, I don't print those at home. I get them professionally printed. Get them professionally printed. <laughs> it's, it, it's not meant to be an insult. A lot of people do actually print oh, from good home. For them. Good for them. Um, and it's, you know, it's doable, especially in this day and age. You get A3 printers, the big giant things. No, these are. Um, oh. oh, is this? Oh, this is issue one. This is as well, issue so one. So it's a very recent thing. How long has this been going on? Uh, the project really started, well, just before Christmas, I guess, and... Um, so very recent. This, well, yeah, yeah, and this this comic came out in about February. We've got another two that are on the go, and we've got my fantastic research assistant, who will come around here and say hello. Uh, this is this is Sean. Sean has been on the project in earnest for the last ten weeks or so, and um, in looser association for donkey's years. Okay, so... Um, how, how did you go from this, oh, this yeah. big hardcover book to this? It's an exceedingly boring story. Okay, well, try and sweeten it for us. Okay, well, I began working... Well, no, okay, first of all, uh, I did some work with Dreamland, 
uh, just before Dreamland Margate. Dreamland Margate, before Dreamland Margate was rejuvenated, was rejuvenated. Okay. Uh, we found out for a colleague of mine found went there and did some photography, and he found out there were some potentially very rare video games. So. Uh, the Street Fighter 2 Whack-A-Mole, yes. which, <laughs> seriously? seriously, if you do a search for, can say, in fact, well, I'll show you the, the picture. Is there a picture inside there the book? a picture inside the oh, book. Oh, fantastic. Can you show the viewers? This, by that, yeah, okay, this way, up, uh, 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 this thing here, <laughs> that is a Street Fighter 2 Whack-A-Mole. Oh, wow. Which I remember. I, did, I did not know that existed. No, no, well, very few people knew it existed. It didn't exist on Maine. That Nobody rare. knew that. Yeah, so apparently there were none of them in England, none of them in Europe, some of them in, in, were so in Japan. Where was found? Well, they didn't know where any of them were in Japan, so it was dead, it's gone. It was lacking, it wasn't on the historic record. And we found not just one, but two of them on um, in Dreamland. If you, if you have a look at our Facebook page, Arcade Tales, there's a video of me going in there and rescuing them. They're tagged in the description.